Mock draft time 1.0 here on Falcons today. We're going to run through all seven rounds of the draft. I use PFF's mock draft simulator to make selections for Terry Fontenot. Now, the way I conduct mock drafts is not what I would do if I was the GM because I'm not the GM and I'm not going to be the GM in April. So I do my best to try and think, what would Terry Fontenot do, right? What would the Falcons do? And we've got a decent sample size of previous drafts under Fontenot to have an idea of positions he values and then the type of players in those position groups that he values a lot. So let's at least refresh our memories with what picks Atlanta has in the upcoming NFL draft. They've got pretty much their full slate of picks. They got some extra picks from some day three trades like Deion Jones going to Cleveland, stuff like that from a few years ago. But other than that, they've got their usual arsenal. So with that being said, let's jump into round number one. We're in this mock draft. Caleb Williams went number one overall. Drake May went two. Jaden Daniels went three. So I missed out on all three of those quarterbacks. But that shouldn't be too big of a surprise. Marvin Harrison goes four. The Chargers uh, get a nice tackle for Jim Harbaugh. The Giants go Roma Dunze. And right before me, the Tennessee Titans took Brock Bowers out of UGA. So now I'm sitting here at number eight. And I go wide receiver Malik Neighbors out of LSU. So let's get to know Malik Neighbors a little bit better because if you watched SEC football last year, he was hard to miss. He was all over the place in Baton Rouge. He was hauling in touchdowns left and right. He's six foot tall, 200 pounds. He is elite in the intermediate passing game. I, I wouldn't say he reminds me of Tyreek Hill because no one reminds me of Tyreek Hill, but I think there's a, like a, this... Uh, overall false sense of Tyreek Hill is just a go route runner and he's just a deep ball guy but Tyreek Hill does a lot of his damage yards after the catch and that's what Malik Neighbors does really well as well now my confirm is he doesn't have that great separation downfield Malik Neighbors can make big plays don't get me wrong but he's not a x receiver vertical go route guy at least not yet players can grow they can develop into bigger roles but at LSU, we saw him in the slot a lot, which that's okay for Atlanta because Drake London is an X receiver. He works the sidelines extremely well. Malik Neighbors, though, for the Tigers last season, 1,500 plus yards, 14 touchdowns. He averaged over seven yards of reception. It's kind of funny that LSU will have two players go top 10 potentially and still lost as many games as they did. But this is a very good pick for Atlanta, not just because I think Malik Neighbors is going to make a great wide receiver, but it's also a position of need for the Falcons. They don't have any returning wide receivers on their roster other than Drake London, Matt Collins, free agent, Van Jefferson, free agent, Scotty Miller, free agent, Kadero Hodge, free agent. All those other names were practice squad players. So they have got to rebuild their entire wide receiver room. And obviously, it's tough to do mock drafts before free agency because if the Falcons don't have a quarterback yet, that could alter this pick. But for now, pre-free agency, let's just err on the side of caution and let's go with neighbors at pick number eight. So that's my current mock draft pick for number eight. I do want to get everyone watching, though, involved in the comment section. So let me know what pick you would make at number eight overall. Would you go with Malik Neighbors? I like Brock Bowers. I like Roma Dunze. Don't get me wrong, but they went before me. So we do have to acknowledge the possibility of your favorite player might not be available at the eighth overall selection. Moving on to round two, edge rusher time. I go Chris Braswell out of Alabama. So another need for Atlanta gets satisfied here with their round two selection. Chris Braswell with the 43rd overall pick would come to Atlanta. Six foot three, 255 pounds. He is the freakiest of freaks. I know that some people look for production. Some people look for traits in a belief that they could develop more in the NFL. If you're a traits guy, he's your man. Uh, he squatted over 700 pounds, and then he jumped 38 and a half inches in the air. And that was before his senior year of college, or his last year at Alabama. Don't you think he might even grow even more? Like, if you're looking for a guy who's an absolute horse of a human being, meaning he runs fast and he jumps high or just does everything well, that's him. The con, though, is the lack of production. Only 11 career sacks at Alabama. 
Now, he sat behind some really good players. I don't know if you're familiar with guys like Will Anderson Jr. or Dallas Turner, but it's tough to get on the field a whole ton when those players are above you on the depth chart. So he might be a snake in the grass that slips into round two because he didn't get a whole lot of opportunities at Alabama, but that would change in the NFL. I think the Falcons' solution, though, I would say long, long term, but at least for the next couple of years, I think it lies in free agency. Overall, Atlanta just does not have a ton of success historically at developing edge rushers for one reason or another. And there are some really good edge rushers in free agency this year. So if they can get their paws on a Josh Allen or a Brian Burns or a Daniil Hunter, I'm not opposed to signing that guy, signing one of those guys, and still drafting Braswell. But I don't think drafting Braswell is your solution to what's an ongoing problem in Atlanta, which is nothing going for the pass rushing spot beyond a season or two for a guy here or there. Now, before we get on to the rest of my mock draft, selfishly, I do ask you to subscribe to the channel if you are not already. We're so close to 19,000 subscribers. This channel has caught fire over the last month and a half, two months almost at this point. And I want to keep that momentum going. So if you have not joined the channel yet, please go ahead and do so. My third round selection, I'm going quarterback. I'm going quarterback Michael Pratt out of Tulane. Now, obviously a lot can change between now and free eight of the draft. If they were to trade for Justin Fields, if they were to trade up, that would obviously alter this decision. But I think even if the Falcons do trade for Fields or they do sign like a Kirk Cousins, for example, I still think it's worth drafting a quarterback in that round three to round four territory. Why? Because quarterback is the most valuable position in all of sports. If it doesn't work out, con, you didn't use a third round pick very well. Pro, you have your next franchise QB. I think the risk is worth, or the reward is worth the risk. And Michael Pratt, some background on him. He's six foot three, 220 pounds. He was a four year starter at Tulane, so he's got loads of experience. And I like that in him, right? I'm not trying to find the next Brock Purdy. That's not easy to do. But I think something that we're seeing pay off for Brock Purdy right now for the 49ers is he played a lot of football at Ames. And Michael Pratt would come in playing a lot of football in New Orleans. And he knows how to read a pocket, how to read a defense. Things that young quarterbacks struggle to do if they're only the starter for a year, maybe two in college. Whereas Pratt would have a lot of experience. So worst case scenario, if you draft Michael Pratt and it doesn't work out, he did not use a third round pick all that well. Boo hoo. Go look at previous third round picks for the Falcons and let me know how many of them developed into players that got second contracts. You could get another, you could get a star quarterback maybe, a starting quarterback maybe, or you could save that third rounder, maybe draft another Jalen Mayfield. I think it's worth the risk. Some more uh, numbers and infos on Pratt though. Like I said, four-year guy at Tulane, so he knows how to command a huddle. He knows how to run an offense. He knows how to play the position. Like There's a lot of guys that come into the NFL that don't have a lot of starting experience, and you get products like Trey Lance and Mitch Trubisky that just fizzle out really before they even get underway. Now, before we get on to the rest of my mock draft today, I do want to share a really cool deal going on with our friends over at Fanatics. You can get this Falcons t-shirt and hat combination on sale when you go to chatsports.com slash ATL combo. Hats are somewhat egregiously expensive. So if you want to get a t-shirt and hat together on sale, use our link. I put that link in the comments and description of today's video. With my fourth round pick for the Falcons, I went offensive tackle. Dominic Puny out of Kansas. So... Why go offensive tackle? Atlanta's got starting tackles. Well, I'll tell you why. Because Dominic Puny is six foot five, 320 pounds. He was a first team all Big 12 player this past season for the Jayhawks. He also excels in run blocking, which is something the Falcons love to do. And with B. John Robinson, couldn't hurt to have an extra offensive lineman out there, even if it's just a jumbo package to move some bodies around. But the main reason I'm drafting Dominic Puny is not to be a starter, but the Falcons need a new swing tackle. They need a new six-man kind of guy. B. 
Because when you look at Atlanta's depth chart on the offensive line, Jake Matthews and Caleb McGarry are hopefully going to be here for a few more seasons at least. But behind them, they don't have a clear backup tackle. So using a fourth-round pick on a starting caliber tackle in my eyes is a very good selection. If an injury pops up, it's not SOL, the whole ship's going down because you didn't plan for it. I know drafting backups isn't the most exciting use of a draft pick, but I'm telling you guys, in the NFL, you've got to be too deep if you want to be serious. Finally, round number five, I go wide receiver Isaiah Williams out of Illinois. So, like I mentioned earlier, Atlanta only has Drake London returning under contract. And even taking Malik Neighbors, we're up to two wide receivers. Sign two guys, we're at four. We still have some more bodies to add. So I go back to the wide receiver pond, and I take Williams from uh, Urbana-Champaign. He's 5'10", 185 pounds. He led the Big Ten in receptions this past season. Keep in mind, there were a lot of really good wide receivers in the Big Ten this year, like, I don't know, Marvin Harrison Jr. comes to mind. But played five seasons at Illinois, so he's got lots of experience, and he is a money-over-the-middle-of-the-field kind of guy. You've got Drake London for the perimeter. You got Malik Neighbors, who does a lot of everything really, really well. Isaiah Williams could be an awesome type of slot receiver over the middle. He's got incredible speed. He doesn't have great hands necessarily to win 50-50 balls. But if we're trying to add some new wrinkles to this wide receiver room, I think Williams could be an excellent candidate to bring a new flavor to the wide receiver department. Last season for the Illini, 82 grabs, over 1,000 yards, five touchdowns. Show of hands, anyone think Illinois has many good quarterbacks in recent history? Like Tommy DeVito is the best one they've had, like, ever. Maybe Isaiah Williams, with some real NFL talent throwing him to football, could have even better numbers. I like this pick a lot in round number five. To round out the mock draft, we have three more selections. In round six, we'll kind of speed through these bad boys here. I went tight end. Jemiah Bell from uh, Jaheim Bell, excuse me, out of Florida State. Why did I go tight end at that selection? Well, similar to my wide receiver picks and even my offensive tackle selection, the Falcons are a little short-handed at the tight end room. I could see them moving on from Jonu Smith. There's a lot of cap savings to be had there, and after that, you don't have a ton of confidence that uh, Kyle Pitts is going to be here long term. And while Bell isn't my potential Kyle Pitts replacement, you overall just need to add another tight end. So I took Bell out of uh, Florida State. 39 grabs this past season, 503 yards, two touchdowns. It's really tough to find good tight ends in the draft these days. So in round six, I understand that I'm probably not going to get a surefire thing, but it's worth taking a chance. My next round six selection via trade with Deion Jones and the Cleveland Browns. I'm going to go Miles Murphy. Not the one from last year, but another ACC Miles Murphy. This one coming out of UNC. Now, why do I go defensive tackle at this spot? At this point in the draft, I am trying to fill out my roster. And whether that means finding replacements for 2024 or finding replacements for 2025, if I look at Atlanta's defensive line, Calais Campbell is a free agent. A lot of your backups are free agent. Gaziano, Street, Huggins. So if you need to rebuild in the trenches, how about take a look at Miles Murphy, who last season for the Tar Heels had 24 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss, one sack. I'm not trying to sell anyone on Miles Murphy being the next dominant defensive lineman for Atlanta, but it's always a good idea to invest in the trenches and win at the line of scrimmage. And having some extra depth at that spot will surely help if injuries pop up. With my seventh or eighth final selection in round number seven, I go cornerback out of Willie, uh, out of Louisiana Tech, Willie Roberts. If I'm looking back at my own mock draft here, I probably wish I go cornerback earlier because I'm not drafting Willie Roberts to be a starter for this team. But Atlanta currently is missing a starting cornerback because Jeff Okuda is a free agent this offseason. So they're going to have to fill that void either through free agency or the draft. And in this mock draft, I ultimately left it up to free agency for the Falcons to sign their next starting cornerback, whether that's bringing back Jeff Okuda, maybe promoting Clark Phillips, or looking to free agency. So 
Looking back here, I'm definitely leaving a lot in free agency to still fill, but I like adding very important positions in the draft. And important positions are corner and edge. You got to get to the quarterback and you got to stop the quarterback. And you don't want to be one injury away from not being able to do either of those things. So grade my mock draft for me. A, B, C, D, or F. I love these grades because people get so worked up. And in reality, it's February right now. We don't even know who's going in what round positively. But yet, people are still going to be so passionate about how bad of a mock draft that is. So do your worst. Give me your worst. Grade my mock draft.